Hi guys, welcome to my 12th video. Today we're going to learn about protocols. Create a new project and let's get started. A protocol is simply a set of properties or methods that every conforming class, struct, or enum has to implement. Now to create a protocol is very easy. You just need to use the keyword protocol followed by the name of the protocol. I'm just going to call this person, okay? Now, let's say I want every person to have a name, right? I'm just going to say var name as string. Then for a protocol, I need to specify a type. So get, okay? Now let's say I want person to also have an age. I'm just going to say var age. This is going to be of type int. And this time around, I'm going to make this a get set, okay? And I'm going to explain the difference between a get and a set in a bit. So just hold on. Now, we're going to create a class called baby. And I want this class to conform to this protocol. To do that, I'm just going to use a colon followed by the name of the protocol. So person like that. And now, whenever we conform to a protocol, as I said, we have to implement the properties or methods that are defined within the protocol. In our case, name and age, right? So I'm just going to click on this and fix. Okay. So now we have a class that has two properties, name and age, that conform to the protocol person. I'm just going to quickly create an initializer. So in it, and here we're going to have our name of type string and age of type end self.name is going to be equal to name, self.age is going to be equal to age, okay? Now, we're also going to create a struct. This time, we're going to call this teenager, okay? And teenager also should conform to the person protocol. And as I said, we have to implement both of these properties. So I'm just going to use this quickly like that. Awesome. Now, let's try explaining what the difference between the get and the get set is. It can be a bit confusing, but just follow along. Now, let's say we create a um, an object of the teenager struct. So I'm just going to say uh, var, let's call this teen equals teenager. Okay? Now, with a get, I can actually change, I can get and I can set a value of, uh, um, what do I call this? Sorry, yeah, let me just initialize this so that we get rid of these errors. So for a struct, I can actually change the va for a get rather, I can actually change the value of a property. So I'm just going to say name equals Emmanuel. I know that sounds weird. It's called get. So why are we able to set? You're going to see the difference in a bit. Don't worry. Now, we can also say teen.age equals, and I'm just going to say 23. Okay. And recall, this is a get set and this is a get. But now this is where things get a little bit tricky. Right. Let's say if we look here, this is a variable of type teenager. Right. Now, what if I want it to actually be a variable of type person okay whenever I specify this this variable is going to be seen as a person type and whenever this happens the get property cannot be changed okay so we can only change the get set so this is an instance where you might want to make it a get set okay but you know if you remove this person, you're still going to have access to the properties within the protocol and the get set is going to work, get is going to work. So just, just keep that in mind. Then another thing you need to know is whenever you have something as a get set, you cannot make it a constant. So for example, we have name as a get. I could actually specify this as a let, which is a constant and is going to work, right? But if I try to set age as a constant, this is going to throw an error. Okay, so it says that it does not conform to the protocol again because it expects a variable. So just keep that in mind, okay? Awesome. 
Now back to this. Now let's say that we want every person to be able to walk. So I'm just going to add a function to our protocol called walk. Okay. Now to do that, I'm just going to say func and then walk as a function. Now the thing is, whenever you want to add a function to a protocol, you simply just write func, then the name of the function and the parentheses. Okay. You do not specify like a curly brace and then your code. You just write, you just, you know, um, declare the function like that. Okay. Now when we've, since we've done this, we need to um, implement these functions in our class and struct. So I'm just going to say func walk. Same thing right here, func walk. And we're just going to write a print statement here and we're going to say dude what what the hell is that you know so a baby does not know how to walk yet probably now for a teenager just say brah I am way past walking I run wonderful so now we have this function implemented in both of these the class and the struct okay now another advantage of protocols is that we can actually conform to multiple protocols at a time so let's say let's create another protocol this time we're gonna call this employable okay and we're gonna have a function here or rather we're gonna have a property here called uh, profession okay and this is gonna be a string sorry and we're gonna have this as uh, get okay awesome now what we want to do is teenager okay we're gonna say hmm well teenager should he be employable Let's say for the sake of the tutorial, a teenager is employable. We just need to use a comma and we're going to say employable right here. Awesome. And the moment we do this, we're going to have to, you know, implement the property that is also available within the protocol employable. So if we click here and fix, it's been added. So we have profession as one of the properties of a teenager. Now we're going to see the difference between this employable um, struct and just this person struct. I'm going to create uh, an instance of the baby class. I'm going to call this uh, let bob equals baby. And we're going to pass in name as Emmanuel. So probably me as a child, age, let's say two years. And uh, we're going to see the properties methods that we're going to have access to so I'm going to say bab dot now you see that we have access to name we have access to age and you see the walk function right here okay now let's say we wanted to let, let's create an instance of the teenager the teenager struct okay so we're going to say var oh let we're not going to change anything so let teen equals teenager okay and this time around, let's also pass in Emmanuel here, age, let's say 23 again. Now you see that we, we now have an extra um, property here for profession. I'm just going to say iOS developer here. So iOS developer. Awesome. Uh, now we can actually create an additional function here. I'm just going to say func. Um, let's call this interview. Okay. And as you've guessed, whenever you create a function, you have to implement it in the class that is that is conforming to the protocol. So I'm going to have to create a new function here and call this interview like that. Print, tell me about yourself. Now, whenever we use teen, say dot, you can see that we actually have access to interview as well as the walk function. So, you know, that's that's just one thing that you can do with protocols. There's one last thing I'd like to point out with regards to protocols. Now, one of the very important advantages that protocols give to us is that 
we can we now actually have like a a um a shared type now look at this example we have we have a class called baby right we also have a struct called teenager now let's say i want to actually loop through uh, an array of objects of both the baby and teenager to get their names now because these are of different types is actually going to be very difficult for us to do this we would have to loop through all babies and then loop through all teenagers get their names and then add them to a particular um, array but with a with a protocol what we can do is we can actually create an array we can call this combined and this array is going to be of type the protocol so I'm just gonna call this person okay so now I'm creating an array of type person now since both the teenager and the baby conform to this particular protocol I can actually create objects or instances of them and insert them to the to the array so I'm just gonna create an instance of the baby first so I'm going to call this bab once more, and this is going to be of type baby. We're going to have our name as Emmanuel, age is 2 again. Then I'm going to say combined dot append a new element. I'm going to pass in bab. Now I see that this actually was accepted because this is a, this conforms to the person protocol. Now I'm going to create another one just so that you can see that I'm not lying. So I'm going to create create a, an instance of the teenager. So I'm going to say tin again. This is going to be tin ager. And we're going to pass in name as Emmanuel again. Let's just say Aquara23 and iOS developer once more. So I'm going to say combined dot append again and I'm gonna pass in the team and you see that this was accepted because this also conforms to the person protocol now this is something interesting we can do let's say I want to print out the names of um, the objects that are within the combined function I'm just gonna use a for loop so I'm gonna say for person in combined and because person has access to both name and age properties as well as the walk function we can actually do something like person dot name okay and I'm gonna say this I'm gonna put this in a print statement and say the name of the person is uh, what is happening here okay is and then I'm gonna say person dot name right here so I'm gonna run this and we should see both names right there so we have Emmanuel which is the name of the baby and Aquara which is the name of the teenager okay we can actually do other things we can actually run um, uh, what's this let's let's run the function person dot walk so that we can see both functions sorry both print statements so for the baby it says dude what the hell is that and for the teenager it says brah I am way past walking so yeah that's one thing you can do if you have any questions or confusions please leave it in the comment section if you enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe see you guys in the next video